Welcome everyone to today's broadcast. My name is Paul. I am in Scotland. Very pleased to be here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Isaiah chapter 10. Let's get straight into it. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, who write misfortune, which they have prescribed to rob the needy of justice and to take what is right from the poor of my peoples, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. What will you do in the day of punishment and in the desolation which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave your glory? Without me they shall bow down among the prisoners, and they shall fall among the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. War to Assyria, the rod of my anger, and the staff in whose hand is my indignation. I will send him against an ungodly nation and against the people of my wrath. I will give him charge to seize the spoil, to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Yet he does not mean so, nor does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off not a few nations. For he says, are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Kalnor like Carchemish? Is not Hamat like Arpad? Is not Samaria like Damascus? As my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols, whose carved images excelled those of Yerushalayim and Samaria. As I have done to Samaria and her idols, shall I not do also to Yerushalayim and her idols? Therefore, it shall come to pass when Adonai, the Lord, hath performed all his work on Mount Zion and on Yerushalayim, that he will say, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his haughty looks. Therefore it shall come to pass, when Adonai, the Lord, hath performed all his work on Mount Zion, and on Yerushalayim, that he will say, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria, and the glory of his haughty looks. For he says, by the strength of my hand, I have done it. And by my wisdom, for I am prudent. Also, I've removed the boundaries of the peoples and have robbed their terrestrials. So I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. My hand has found like a nest the riches of the peoples. And as one gathers eggs that are left, I have gathered all the earth. And there was no one who moved his wing, nor opened his mouth with even a peep. Shall the axe boast itself against him who chops with it? Or shall the sow exalt itself against him who sows with it? As if a rod could wield itself against those who lift it up or as if a staff could lift up, as if it were not wood. Therefore Adonai, Adonai Sevaot, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will send leanness among his fat ones, and under his glory he will kindle a burning, like the burning of a fire. So the light of Israel, the Ori Hayashirel, will be for a fire and his holy one for a flame. 
it will burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day and it will consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field both soul and body and they will be as when a sick man wastes away then the rest of the trees of his forest will be so few in number as a child may write them. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Yasharel and such of us have escaped of the house of Jacob will never again depend on him who defeated them, but will depend upon Yahuwah, the Lord, the Kadosh Ekad Yasharel. The Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth, the remnant will to return, the remnant of Yaakov, to El Gibor, the mighty God. The remnant will return, the remnant of Yaakov, to El Gibor, the mighty God. For though your people, O Yashuel, be as the sand of the sea, a remnant of them will return. The destruction decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For Adonai Elohim Sevaot, the Lord God of hosts. There's so much lost in the English translation. Poor listeners may think that that is Yahovah Elohim Sevaot. It's Adonai. Elohim, Sevaot, absolute dominical sovereign in plurality of all power. It's not Yahovah in plurality of all power. It's Adonai, Elohim, Sevaot. We'll make a determined end in the midst of all the earth. For Adonai, Elohim, Sevaot, will make a determined end in the midst of all the earth. Therefore, thus says Adonai Elohayim Sevaot, O my people who dwell in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrian. He shall strike you with a rod and lift up his staff against you in the manner of Egypt. That's the cross. A rod and a staff. Against you in the manner of Egypt. Therefore, thus says Adonai, Elohim, Sevaot, O my peoples who dwell in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrian. He shall strike you with a rod and lift up his staff against you in the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while, and the indignation will cease, as will my anger in their destruction. And Yahovah of armies will stir up a scourge for him, like the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. As his rod was on the sea, so will he lift it up in the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away. From your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil he has come to Arayah he has passed Migron at Mikmash 
He has attended to his equipment. They have gone along the ridge. They have taken up lodging at Givar. Rama is afraid. Givar of Shaul have left, have fled. Lift up your voice, O daughter of Galim. Cause it to be heard as far as Laish. Oh, poor Anatoth. Madmen, mad men are as fled. The inheritance of Gavim seek refuge. As yet he will remain at Nob in that day. He will shake his fist at the mount of the daughter of Zion. The hill of Yerushalayim. Behold, Adonai, Yahovah Sevaot, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will lop off the bow with terror. Those of high stature will be hewn down, and the haughty will be humbled. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one, by the Giborakad, the mighty one. Well, friends, Elohim Yim Yabubah. Um, punishes mortals often by other mortals uh, but when those that are decreed to oppress the ungodly nation uh, get uh, uh, too harsh and cruel uh, such as the Egyptians and the Assyrians and the Babylonians at times then Elohim Yahweh has his ways to punish those people and we must not be of oppression or fear, or doubt, or unbelief. We must be persons of faith, and truth, and holiness. And, you know, I was thinking, friends, of what happened a long, long time ago, and I was thinking of how uh, the devils are actually, not only are they deluded, they're actually against each other, because lust, and pride, and covetousness, and envy are actually contrary to life, to all arm hayin. To eternal life. And Christ will take holiness and righteousness and meekness and justice uh, and will say to the wicked, Depart from me, I never knew you. I never knew you. Not I once knew you. And you stop reading the scriptures or you stop praying. We stop going to gatherings. No, no. I never knew you. Never knew. No. So they would prescribe extra oppressions um, when sent against the ungodly. And that's unrighteous unrighteous decrees. And of course, in the modern era now, we have governments in Spain, Austria, Italy, uh, elsewhere, commanding their inhabitants to, to have these injections, uh, which is absolute wickedness. Uh, there, was, there is no pandemic. There has been no pandemic. Uh, there's been an outbreak of a terrible flu uh, terrible type of influenza, uh, chest infection. Um, and there has been deaths, uh, but nowhere near the numbers claimed. The response by the wicked governments has been one of protectionism, uh, not wanting their uh, health care to be flooded, which never was the case. Hospitals have not been as empty as they've been in the last two years for a long time. Uh, and yet the government narrative was that hospitals are under pressure, and that was just a lie. Meanwhile, the big pharmaceutical industries, which is massive quantities of money, uh, are now telling us we may continually need inocula inoculations every few months. They'll be rubbing their hands together with glee. 
And yet I tell you, people that have had one or two so-called vaccinations have died. Absolutely preposterous delusion. Absolutely preposterous delusion. Uh, promulgated by wicked career politicians that are iniquitous. Now, woe, woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees. Uh, the giving of an orphaned little boy to two male sexual deviants. The height of wickedness. The height of wickedness. The giving of a little girl to two female sexual deviants. Absolute wickedness. Woe. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees. The telling to a little girl, oh, you could be a little boy. Or to a little boy, oh, you could be a little girl. And then if they convince them of this wickedry, no matter what their parents say, there's been parents, uh, there was a parent in Canada who had their child taken off them by the government because the child had been told in school it could be a little, was it a little boy, could be a little girl. And when the little boy went home, the parents said, no, no, you're a little boy. The child went back to school. Mummy and daddy say, I'm a little boy. Oh, no, no, no. And the man was threatened, the child taken off him. Absolute wickedness. Absolute wickedness. And then giving them chemicals and counselling. A male is a male from birth. A female is a female from birth. Anything attempt to change that is perversion and wickedness. No. That widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. Well, that's very much robbing the fatherless, what I've just described in verse 3. Uh, and taking the right of liberty from the citizenry. Um, I mean, people say, oh, well, the vaccines are free. No, nothing's free. Nothing's free. It's paid for by the taxes of the inhabitants, the citizenry. It's the citizenry that pay for them. Wickedry. Systemic. Wickedry. And a deluded populace. Now, what will you do in the day of punishment and in the desolation which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help? Tell me. To whom will you flee for help? Where will you leave your glory? And these are very, very powerful scriptures. Uh, one could talk for hours on these scriptures. Um, to whom will you flee for help? You see. Now, this has to do with the judgment written upon the devil as well, you see. Uh, who decreed rebellion and wickedry in heaven and upon earth uh, through lies and oppression and delusion. Um, and then, of course, the effects of the work of the wily, vile, devile over a long period of time, uh, systemically and culturally, has resulted in wicked governance. Um, as described. And the question is, is um, what will you do in the day of punishment? Who will you go to for help? Where will you leave your glory? And it is all sort of mankind, you see. Uh, all glory and praise and honor goes to God, not to mortals and certainly not to devils. Elohim Yahweh is the God of glory, the Elohayim Hakavod, the Adon Hakavod, and the Elohayim Hakavod, and Yahovah Hakavod, the Lord of glory, and the Melech Hakavod, the King of glory. 
Melek Yahushua Hamashiach Hakavod Haretz Hashemayim Hamai. The King Jesus Christ of glory, of heaven, of earth, and of all mankind. Melek Yahushua Hamashiach Hakavod Haretz Hamai. Now, this is chapter 10. 10 speaks of completion. And this is a very thorough chapter. It's a very in-depth chapter. It's of quite a different character to the previous chapters. Right, I would say all the previous chapters are unique, the first 10. Um, and this one is, is a very powerful and a various chapter. It, it applies to the judgment which upon the devil, upon mankind. Um, and it speaks of Christ and the Father very, very much. And um, without me, they shall bow down among the prisoners, and they shall fall among the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So without the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, mankind shall die the death. But God's anger is not turned away. His hand is stretched out still. So war to Assyria, the rod of my anger and the staff in whose hand is my indignation. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yahovah is my shepherd, I shall not want. No. Um, So it's the rod of protection and discipline and the staff of comfort and nourishment. That's what the rod and the staff symbolize in scripture. The rod of protection and discipline if necessary and the staff of comfort and supply. Now, Christ was upon the rod and the staff which is the cross in his own body upon the tree bore he all thine sins he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him and this is war to mankind that is punitive and oppressive, oppressive even though Elohim Yahweh has used them. Um, and it's very interesting because in the rod is the rod of anger. Uh, the staff in whose hand is my indignation. So this country, Assyria, As, Assyria, is described as being the rod of God's anger uh, and the staff in whose hand is my indignation. So the whole nation is held as a staff and as a rod. The scripture says that mortals are as grasshoppers and nations as drops in the bucket. Now, verse six, Elohim Yahweh sends Assyria against Israel, describes an ungodly nation, the people of my wrath. And then you have this expression. I'll give him charge to seize the spoil, to take the prey. Now, you may well remember, friends, that Isaiah um, has had two sons and prophesied of a third, Emmanuel, the son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. But prior to that, he had two sons, Shia Yashuv, Shia Yashuv, which means a remnant shall return, and Maha Shal Hashbaz. Let me just make sure. Just hold on, friends. Yes, Isaiah 8, Maher Shalal Hashbaz. 
which means um, swift to the spoil, swift to the prey. Maher shalal hashbaz, swift to spoil, swift to the prey. And then it tells you here. Um, in verse 6 of chapter 10, um, that Assyria will be sent to Israel to seize the spoil, to take the prey. So this speaks of the divine operations of God in the Son uh, on behalf of all mankind. And it's very interesting to note um, that Isaiah has these two sons, a remnant shall return and swift to spoil, swift to pray, and then declares, as it were, a third son, Emmanuel, um, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. In chapter nine, which we read yesterday, chapter nine, verse five. And of course, this person is to tread them down like the mire of the streets. And we know that the Lord Jesus Christ treads the winepress of the fury of almighty God. What's very interesting in verse seven, um, he doesn't mean so, nor does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off not a few nations. So this is an interesting insight into the personage eternal, the ancient of days, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus said, he said, whoever, uh, I, whoever falls on me shall be broken, but on whomsoever I fall shall be crushed to a powder. Uh, in the early chapters of Luke, it is said of Christ that he, he, he is set for the rise and fall of many humans. Um, Jehovah is a man of war. So it's a, it's a fascinating insight into the personage of Christ, is verse 7, beloved listeners. He doesn't mean so, nor does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off not a few nations. Of course, we know that Christ rules the nations with a rod of iron and shall smash them in pieces uh, like a piece of pottery. He says, are not my princes altogether kings? And then draws some similarities. Um, is Samaria not like Damascus? Well, Damascus was in Syria. There's Samaria uh, in the Israeli region. Uh, and Hamath, we have the terrorist organization Hamas today. Uh, Kalno, Kolno, is not Kolno like Karkamish. So this is like a comparison of the territory of the devil and the territory of some of the believers. Uh, comparison between uh, the lives of the holy and the elect and the chosen and the lives of the wicked and the doomed. What verse nine is, and it's the number nine. It's the divine perspective and the feelings towards mankind. Um, and as as often in scripture is a conversation in the Godhead between Father and Son concerning all mankind. As my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols, whose carved images excelled those of Yerushalayim and Samaria. As I have done to Samara Yah and her idols, I shall not do also to, shall I not do also, sorry, as I have done to Samara Yah and her idols, shall I not do also to Yerushalayim and her idols? So that uh, is, is, is very, very interesting. Now, I think that in verse 10, which by the way is Isaiah 10 10. Uh, is a unique expression in the whole of scripture. The kingdoms of the idols. 
you don't get that expression anywhere else. Isaiah 10.10, 10, you see. Now, 10 speaks of completion, you see. And that uh, is a very, very interesting verse. It speaks of the Son of God having all knowledge of mortals, having found the kingdoms of the idols, um, whose carved images excelled those of Jerusalem and Samaria. Well, that's a very, very remarkable verse because excellent carved images speaks of the very best that mankind has to offer, whether it's in the realms of art, culture, science, uh, industry, vehicular production, uh, all kinds of things. Um, education, you know, these things are things that persons deify and worship and adore. Uh, all these things, you see. So carved images, you see, friends, is not just uh, idols, because, I mean, the reality is, particularly in the Western nations, only a tiny, tiny proportion of people have carved images. Well, I suppose, I suppose there are, in, it's in British culture to have little ornaments of little people and dogs, which is wickedness. But generally, they don't bow down to them, sort of, but they do have them in their homes, which is, which is wrong, of course. Elohim Yahweh does not change, friends. Uh, thou shalt not make an image of anything that Elohim Yahweh has made. Whenever you switch a television set on or watch a film, you are making, you're involved in the making of an image of something that God has made. That's the issue. Thou shalt not make an image of anything that Elohim Yahovah has made. So does that mean, well, can I watch documentaries about the building of things? Yes. Yeah. But it tells you clearly the character and nature of God Almighty is that human beings are forbidden to make an image of anything that God has made. But you see, friends, the spheres of culture and influence, as the ones I just mentioned earlier, they are also, in a sense, carved images. Uh, and it tells you that there are kingdoms uh, that excel the work of Jerusalem and Samaria. Well, Jerusalem is the bride, the lamb's wife, the church. So it's a fascinating scripture, and one could talk on that for quite some time, to think there are nations and peoples who in their artistry and their resourcefulness and their wisdom, which are all divinely given, they're able to produce things that excel the things produced by Yerushalayim and Samaraya. Such is the all various wisdom of Elohayim Yehovah. As I have done to Samaraya and her idols, Shall I not also do to Yerushalayim and her idols? Therefore it shall come to pass when Adonai, the Lord, has performed all his work on Mount Zion and on Yerushalayim, that he will say, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his haughty looks. Well, if you look at Bashar, says it, what's his name? the current uh, president of Syria, Assad, Bashar Assad, he very, very much has haughty looks, you know, and it's a very brutal, brutal regime. They terribly, terribly torture and do wicked things to their prisoners every day. It's a very, very wicked regime, the Syrian regime. It does not bear repeating what the Syrian regime does to human beings. I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his haughty looks. Check him out, friends. If you've never seen the man I speak of, pop him into, well, perhaps that would be a contradiction in terms, I suppose. <laughs> but anyway, take my word for it, friends. He, he, he has very haughty looks. No, but he says, by the strength of my hand, I've done it. And by my vis deem, for I am prudent. 
there's a scripture, friends, it says, every man proclaims his own faithfulness, but a faithful man who can find? Where is the faithful man? Who is the faithful man? Tell me, who is the faithful man? Who is the faithful woman? Where are they? Go on quietly, friends. Be faithful. Be valiant. Kind and true. Be loving. Now. Shall the axe boast itself against him who chops with it? Or shall the saw exalt itself against him who sows with it? As if a rod could wield itself against those who lift it up. Or as if a staff could lift it lift up as if it were not wood. So that's verse 15, beloved listeners. And that speaks clearly um, of <clears throat> verse 5. War to Assyria, the rod of my anger and the staff in whose hand is my indignation. And then, of course, as I uh, intimated earlier, um, nations that are used to be punitive towards other nations um, can sometimes become too oppressive and unrighteous themselves. And so they boast themselves against God, um, pride and arrogance and wretchedness. And uh, there's not a hand or a foot moves on this planet without Elohim Yahweh. Elohim Yahweh is the life in every mortal. That's what is meant in the, the description that is wrongly translated in English when it says uh, there is not a sparrow that falls to the ground without your heavenly father. That is not what it says. There is not a sparrow that lands upon the ground without your heavenly father. It refers to the movement of creation. Oh, there's a sparrow. It's landed, it's landed on the grassy and all over there. That sparrow has landed there with the Heavenly Father. Oh, yes. Elohim Yahweh is the life in every creature, the birds of the air, the fish of the ocean, and all mankind, all creation upon the earth and beneath the earth. Elohim. Elohim Yahweh. El Elyon. Now then, beloved listeners, let us proceed through our reading. Therefore, this is verse 16. Now, this verbiage in this verse is very rare in Scripture. Now, in the English, it doesn't show the depth of meaning of this verse. It says, therefore, Adonai, Adonai Sevaot will send leanness among his fat ones and under his glory. So he will kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. So this is very important scripture. And it's Isaiah 10, 16. It's a 101 for mankind. Now, Adonai, Adonai Sevaot. This is a specific and direct and clear, crystal clear sovereign operation of thine maker, thine sovereign thine Lord and thine King. He will send leanness among his fat ones. What does that mean? Well, it could be otherwise godly believers that have had wickedry. If you're listening to this and you're generally godly, but you have behaved wickedly to the Lord your God, you have grieved the Son of God, you have not been obedient and faithful and subject, then look out because leanness is coming to you. Have you been fat upon the earth? Ho, ho, ho. Fat, content, at ease, sumptuously and luxuriously feasting upon fatness. Behold, leanness may well be your portion. Because of pride and arrogance. Now, the second part of this verse 16 is very interesting. Under his glory, he will kindle a burning. So this has to do with sovereign dealings uh, with poor, wretched, deluded uh, creatures. God will kindle a burning. You see, 
This has to do with the character and nature of the doomed, deluded devil, the fleeing serpent, uh, over whom every true born-again Bible-believing blood-washed saint has, has all power. You have all power over all the power of the enemy, friends. Oh, yes. The enemy is destroyed and ruined completely. The Lord Jesus said, in me, he has nothing. Christ God is a great king, friends, far, far above all creatures. Now, under his glory, he will kindle a burning, like the burning of a fire. Well, Christ said, uh, behold, I have come to kindle a fire, and behold, it has already been kindled. And then he met with Pilate, and the fire was lit when the Jews said, his blood be upon us and upon our children. And it culminated in the gas chambers of Auschwitz and Birkenau and elsewhere. And the massive cremation centers where the fires and the smoky corpses of the Yahudis were burned. He will kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. So, verse 17, the Ori Hayashirel, the Ori Hayashirel, the light of Israel. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. Vori Hayashirel. Ori, O-R-I, Ori, Ori. It means light in Hebrew. In Hebrew. Vorai Hayashirel will be for a fire. The light of Israel. I am the light of the world. John 8, 12. Behold, I am the light of the world. He or she that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Vori Hahayi. The Hori Hakai, the light of life. And then, of course, we read that the garments of Christ are, are a fiery brightness. We read in Revelation 1, and you can have a look at Daniel 7 and 10. Um, and I believe there's a description is in Ezekiel. And then, of course, there was a burning bush where first the angel of Yehovah. And then Yahovah himself appeared to Moshe. Um, and then you have the, the fire going before Elohim Yahovah that devours and burns up all his enemies. Um, and so in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Everything received being through him. Nothing received being that did not receive being except through him. Uh, Christ is the light of life in every mortal. His holy one will be for a flame and it will burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. Uh, that was in a previous chapter. Let me just look for that. Verse 18 of chapter 9, for wickedness burns as the fire. It shall devour the briars and the thorns and kindle in the thickets of the forest. They shall mount up like rising smoke through the wrath of Yehovah, Siva, or the earth is burned up and the people shall be as fuel for the fire. And there you have it, friends, you see. And then it tells you clearly, and I expounded this reasonably thoroughly yesterday, uh, the last few verses of Isaiah chapter 9. Either you can present yourselves under the cross of Jesus Christ and feast upon the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ, dying in agony and reproach and mocking and sorrow. Um, friends, or... The reality is you'll be 
bringing the curse of damnation upon yourselves uh, by um, your wickedness, because wickedness itself burns as the fire of hell, and you'll be eating your own flesh. You can either eat the flesh of Christ or eat your own flesh. And there's the scripture for it. Every man shall eat the flesh of his own harm, own arm. And interesting enough, it even speaks uh, of mankind upon the earth in time. Because um, even though death has been abolished, righteousness eternal established, eternal redemption accomplished, men still die in time upon the earth. However, this, dear friends, is the last generation. There's nobody giving a date or a time, but I'm convinced this is the last generation, friends. And there you have it. Any human being that does not eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus Christ is eating the flesh of their own arm. The wrath of God abides upon those that do not trust in Christ Jesus. It will burn and devour. The light of Israel will be for a fire. Verse 17, friends. Isaiah 10, 17. So the light of Yashirel will be for a fire and his holy one for a flame. It will burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. And it is this day. A day with Adonai Yehovah is like a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. We are almost at the third day. It has been two days since the ascension of Jesus Christ, who's patiently waiting for the fruit of the earth, his bride, his assembly, his congregation, his wife. And on the third day, Christ arose from the dead. And on the third day, hundreds and hundreds of millions of blood-washed saints will ascend out of the tombs physically and will be clothed with physical immortality, friends. And that's where we are in the chronology right now. It is almost the third day, the seventh day, the day of rest, the resurrection day. Judgment deity, resurrection deity, the risen Christ God, Jesus, thine Lord. Now, the millennial kingdom, one of the great themes of Isaiah. You may remember, friends, that there's a great description. Let me just turn to it quickly. And millennial conditions in various places. Um, Isaiah 9, verse 7, the th over the throne, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. Now, Just looking through, friends, for the other clear reference to, to the Millennial Kingdom. There it is. Isaiah 4, Jerusalem's glorious future. Um, let us be called by your name, take our reproach. That's one of the most phenomenal verses in scripture, Isaiah 4, 1. 
In that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own food and wear our own apparel, and let us be called by your name, take away our reproach. That is uh, the wife, uh, the wife that went away at the dawn of time, the wife, the bride, the church, the redeemed. Uh, that is what that is. That is the, the salvation of all mankind, friends. The perfect salvation, the glorious sovereign salvation of Elohim Yabubah. Of Adonai Yahushua Hamashiach, thy Lord Jesus Christ. It's a beauteous verse. Uh, in that day, the branch of Yahovah, and I remember when we expounded chapter four, friends, we looked rather extensively at, uh, at Isaiah 11, and we had a glance at Revelation, the branch of the Lord, and John 15, uh, I am the vine, you are the branches, you see. Now shall be beautiful and glorious. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing. That's the bride, the lamb's wife. And those of Yah Sherel, Yah Cherel, Yah Sherel, Yah beloved God. Those of Yah Cherel, Yah Sherel. And it shall come to pass that he who is left in Zion remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone who is recorded among the living in Jerusalem, you will read about that in Hebrews, uh, the Lamb's Book of Life in Revelation. When Adonai has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the blood of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning, then Yehovah will create above every dwelling place of Mount Zion and above her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For over all the glory, there will be a covering. And there will be a tabernacle for shade in the daytime from the heat, for a place of refuge, and for a shelter from storm and rain. And then, of course, in Isaiah 2, you have the establishment in the latter days, the mountain of Yahovah's house, which is Jesus Christ, currently filling the whole planet, friends, currently composing of every human being upon the whole sphere, currently filling heaven and earth, the stone put out of the mountain without hands that comes into the earth, becomes a great mountain and fills the whole planet. That is your king. Now, and that is millennial conditions, you see, Isaiah 2. Out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the Devar v'hayahovah v'yerushalayim, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, judging between many nations, the rebuking many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, friends, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So there you have it. Um, now let's, well, we've gone as far back as chapter two. Let's just quickly go back into chapter one. And please check out the podcasts on these uh, individual chapters, friends. We, we covered a lot of ground. Yes, yeah, you see, you have cleansing in Isaiah 116, 116. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do vile. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says Yahuwah. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crime sun, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if thou dost refuse and rebel, thou shalt be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of Yahuwah has spake. I will rid myself of my adversaries. I will take vengeance on my enemies. Now, Zion shall be redeemed with justice and her penitence with righteousness.
Now, back to our text in Isaiah chapter 10. Christ, whose goings is from everlasting to everlasting. His goings are from eternity. Verse 19, and the rest of the trees of his forest will be so few in number that a child may write them. Well, friends, that is the thief upon the cross. The three trees, all the damned, all the doomed, to the left. Deity incarnate, the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross in the middle and everybody else on the cross on the right. All sinners in time upon the earth have a similitude with the man, the thief upon the cross. Yes, unable to save yourselves, listeners, objects of mercy, trophies of grace, creature possessions, redeemed and precious. Unable to save yourselves, your prayers, your scripture readings, your good works, your thoughts, your deeds as nothing. Only the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. All you have is the death of Christ, sinners. And all you need is the death of Christ. The all sufficiency of the redemptive eternal purposes of thy glorious Saviour the Creator, Yahushua Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. And that is what is meant by that verse, friends, Isaiah 10, 19, the rest of the trees of his forest will be so few in number that a child may write them. And then out of the tomb, the second man, the Lord from heaven, has redeemed his wife. One man one woman at the beginning, one man, one woman at the end. The father bringing the son and his bride to himself, just as Abraham had Isaac and Rebecca presented to himself. All sinners, friends. And I realize it's a metaphor you're very likely unfamiliar with. All sinners are like that dying thief upon the cross. Thieves, robbers, deceivers, deluded, unable to save yourselves, unable to cleanse yourselves from your sins and iniquities, friends. Subject creatures in receipt of grace and mercy. All you have is grace and mercy, and all you need is grace and mercy. Absolute dominical sovereignty, friends. And that is what is meant by that verse. Everyone died that day upon the cross in Christ. And that thief saw deity in Christ upon the tree. He saw purity and everlasting life and holiness in Christ upon the tree, suffocatively bleeding out for all of thee, he assuredly doeth. Everyone died that day at Mount Calvary. All the damned, all the doomed, damned and deluded in that other thief upon the cross. Mankind had already died, the substitutionary saviour, the saviour of all mankind, the creator incarnate, the ancient of days upon the tree. For all of thee, he assuredly doeth, beloved Hyacinus. And then everybody that is to be saved in type was upon that dying thief that day who saw purity and deity in Christ upon the tree. And you could say that he ate of his flesh and drank of his blood. Unless thou eateth mine flesh and drinketh mine blood, thou hast no life in thee. For my flesh is food and my blood is drink indeed. And after hearing this, one of the saddest verses in scripture, friends, John 6, 66. Check it out yourselves. From this time, many of his disciples turned away back 
and walked no more with him. But Cephas, Shimei and Cephas, Simon Peter, the man who walked on the water, the man who cut off the high priest's servant's ear in the garden, the one who said, I will never ever deny you, I will willing to die with you, denied him thrice. That one said, Christ said to him, will you go also, Peter? Lord, to whom shall I go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Now, it shall come to pass in that day the remnant of Yashirel and such have escaped the house of Jacob of the house of Jacob will never again depend on him who defeated them, but will depend on Yahovah, the Kadosh Ekad HaYashorel. So mortals to some degree depend upon the devil. You see the delusion, the fear, the oppression, the confusion. They live in error and deception, even to this day, friends. So where are such people? Well, they live in your vicinity, friends. People you see on the street, your neighbors, your family living uh, under the oppressions and delusions and deceptions of the doomed ones. The remnant shall return, the remnant of Yaakov to the mighty God. So you have this theme of the remnant is such a strong theme in scripture, um, that I, in, in the book of Isaiah particularly, that um, Isaiah's son, Shia Yashuv, literally means a remnant shall return. It's the remnant of Yaakov. It doesn't say the remnant of Israel. Um, so it's what's left over of the first man. The first man was necessary. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to this message here, Knuss. And they'll return to El Gibor, which is somewhat of a, a rare uh, turn of phrase in, um, in Scripture. El Gibor. And that's verse 21, Isaiah 10, 21. The remnant will return. Israel, ye shall all return. The remnant of Yaakov to El Gibor. Though your people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, a remnant of them shall return. And of course, in the last generation, we've seen millions return to Israel physically. The destruction decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Their agreement with death shall be abolished when they said his blood be upon us and upon our children, culminating in the terrible events of World War II and the Nazi Hitlerian regime. Um, their covenant with death when they conspired to have Christ crucified, their agreement with death and iniquity shall be abolished. And the destruction decreed upon them shall overflow with righteousness, benevolence, loving kindness, patience, and gracious, covenantal, and providential love. Because, and this is verse 23, friends, 10:23, and uh, this is quite a rare title in, in Scripture. So, chapter 10 is a very fulsome chapter, and I'm just thinking of time. Um. Verse 23, for Adonai Elohayim v'sevaot. For the Lord God of hosts, but it's not Yahovah Elohim sevaot, it's Adonai Elohim sevaot, will make a determined end in the midst of all the earth. Well, that was Calvary when those uh, three persons was upon the tree. That was Calvary. Now, and that is verse 23, 10, 23. Now, do not be afraid of the devil. Uh, do not be afraid of the Assyrian mankind. He shall strike with a rod and lift up his staff against you in the manner of Egypt. Um, the scandal on of the cross, the offense of the cross. The message of the cross is foolishness to those that are damned and deluded. But to us who are being saved, it is a sweet savour of life unto life, dear friends. Now. And then Yehovah of armies, you see, it goes from uh, 
Adonai Sevaot, the Yahavar of hosts, will stir up a scourge for him like the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Orev. As his rod was on the sea, so he will lift it up in the manner of Egypt. That's a very complex verse, and it's verse 26. Um, I could do a whole podcast on that one verse. Now, uh, a rod upon the sea is the rod of discipline and uh, correction and protection. The sea speaks of the sea of souls, all mankind, and he will lift it up in the manner of Egypt. So it speaks of Christ saying, dealing with the wicked, uh, crushing those upon whom he doth fall. Christ is set for the rise and fall of many human beings, friends. Make no mistake. And he will lift it up in the manner of Egypt. And of course, um, the uh, cross, the staff was lifted up and the waters were parted and the saints, the lamb's wife, the church, the redeemed, the congregation in the wilderness went over on dry land. And he, this is a beautiful verse, verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from thine shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. And of course, there's a beautiful old uh, chorus. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. By the Holy Ghost and power, just as the prophet spoke. This is the time of the latter reign. God is moving in power again. And by the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. And um, there's the verse for it, friends. It's the Son of God in complete, entire, all-sufficient expression. Verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your soul. That's complete freedom for mankind. And the devil's yoke from off your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. The oil of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes on account of the virtue and power of the atoning uh, exponential uh, blood of Jesus Christ. The anointing of the Holy Spirit comes on the merit of the atoning work. The completed atoning work. Now, all these uh, names of places mean things, friends. He has come to Ayayit. He has passed Migron. At Michmash, he has attended to his equipment. It's a great phrase. Are you aware of uh, your gifts, friends, the gifts of the Spirit? You have an anointing from the Holy One. You know all things, 1 John 2, 20 and verse 27. Are you aware, friends, of your uh, the weapons of your warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds? Um, at Michmash, he's attended to his equipment. Christ has been, died, rose again, ascended, um, and has wrought eternal redemption, friends. And that which was captive, captive to sin and Satan uh, has been taken captive. Christ has taken captive captivity and now has all dominical power in the sky and upon this very earth, friends. He is attended at Michmash to his equipment. <clears throat> they've gone along the bridge, they've taken up lodging at Givar. Ramar is afraid. Givar of soul hath fled. Now, let's move on to Madmen are, you see, Madmen. There it is, friends. Some people say it's simplistic, but there you have it, verse 31. Uh, well, well, in verse 30, O daughter of Galim, well, Gal is Gal. You know, I don't know if you know the, my listeners don't know English, how well they know English, but Gal, G A W L, look it up. Uh, it's something that makes you unhappy. Uh, Gal is something you wouldn't want when you feel as though you're being galled. You feel it's not a good feeling. You feel grieved, you know. Daughter of Galim, cause it to be heard as far as La Ish, well, Ish means human being, means mortal, ish, ish and isha. Poor Anatoth and madmen, madmen are, has fled. Uh, madmen are, humans have become madmen under the curse, angry and crazy. The inhabitants of Gevim seek refuge, as yet he will remain at Nob that day. He will shake his fist at the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem, verse 32. Um, so this is talking about the Assyrian 
that speaks to the devil and mankind in rebellion. And they're spoken of as being madmen, uh, persons that are in a state of gal. Um, there are various ways to look at this passage of scripture, friends. You can look at it from various perspectives. And please do study it further, friends. It would be impossible in one hour to expound this chapter thoroughly. Um, so this is just a concise exposition. Now, he will shake his fist at the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Yerushalayim. The purpose of this whole planet is the Lord Jesus Christ and his wife. That is it. Behold, Adonai, Yehovah of armies. Now, I think that's almost unique. I think you do get that elsewhere. And this is verse 33, friends. 10.33. Behold, Adonai, Yehovah of armies will lop off the bow with terror. Well, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, uh, my father cuts it off. Men gather them and they're cast into the fire. Uh, we've looked rather closely at trees, forest, branches uh, in these chapters thus far. Yahovah of armies, Adonai, the absolute supreme sovereign, will lop off the bow with terror. Those of high stature, will be hewn down, that's all the doomed, deluded demons. The haughty will be humbled, he will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one, Givorekad. Uh, that is a very powerful verse, verse 33, and it tells you everything you need to know. That would be the triune Godhead in full expression. Uh, Adonai, Yahovah of armies will lop off the bow with terror. And it's, the bow speaks of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, it speaks of the work uh, of mankind having the knowledge of evil. You see, that's what that speaks of. It speaks of man, men and women being established in evil. You see, and it tells you God will lop off all of that with terror. Um, the haughty will be humble. You know, humble thine selves unto the mighty hand of Elohim of Theos. But he will exalt thee in due course, beloved Hyrcanus. Uh, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. When a man's ways please Yahuwah, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron. So that's men and women and devils established in wickedry will be dealt with uh, with iron. And Lebanon will fall by the Givorekad, the mighty one. So that is going to do it for today, friends. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's been really a pleasure to share with you some thoughts on Isaiah chapter 10. So until next time, uh, may the face of Elohim Yehovah shine upon you, upon your homes and upon your families. Uh, and give you peace in every way. Until next time, friends, shalom, shalom.